Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. One question I get here and there is, how do records work? And it seems like everyone who asks me that is uh, embarrassed to ask. It's not an embarrassing thing to ask, and if you don't know, you're not dumb. It's just uh, it's just one of those things that's kind of hard to explain, but once you get it, it's an easy concept. Um, I was driving cross country a couple years ago, uh, stopping at a bunch of record stores along the way. And I went to one, I was talking to the owner, uh, we were talking back and forth, he'd been there for like 10 years or so, and then uh, he just kind of paused and looked around and kind of whispered, hey, so how do records work? And I was kind of surprised that, that, that he didn't know, but I explained it to him and, and he was like, oh man, thanks for explaining that. No one ever, no one's ever told me how it actually works. And so I'm going to explain to you in a very easy, easy way how it actually works. There, there was a lot of early signs of people trying to figure out how to capture sound waves, but the one that really turned into the record was Thomas Edison. Uh, he patented this idea where he would speak into this diaphragm and it would etch grooves into a wax cylinder. And so that's kind of the first way that this was ever able to be played back, really. And Thomas Edison patented this idea both for cylinders and for flat discs. Um, there's a guy named Emil Berliner that did it uh, in the U.S. first and actually developed the uh, gramophone and the phonograph, the hand crank phonograph that was able to, we were able to use as a disc. So this is a very crude example of a groove. So as I said, Thomas Edison, when he spoke into this diaphragm, it would it would move this this needle that would cut these grooves into the cylinder. So when a needle would run across those grooves again, the sound that it would make would generate the vibration that would be amplified into the sound waves. Now, it's all about vibration. Go into your, on, uh, into your sound system, turn off the speakers, and be real quiet and drop the needle. You can still hear the music coming out because it's the sound of the needle running along that groove, and that sound of that friction basically is creating vibrations that is translating into sound. I'm gonna show you an example right now of a hand crank phonograph and how that works and how it creates the sound waves. So this is my portable phonograph. It is a hand crank. So basically what you do is you start uh, cranking it, which builds up the tension, which puts the platter in motion. But so once you get that tension going, uh, you release the tension and drop that needle on there like that and you've got music coming out. No electricity needed. See, I'm gonna do a close-up here, uh, kind of on the needle. And so the vibration being created by the needle here is going up that tone arm right there. Um, there's a little close-up of the needle. It's a pretty barbaric looking needle. Uh, but the needle creates those vibrations is going up this tone arm and as the vibrations go up this tone arm, they're being amplified underneath. And basically this hollow part right here acts as a horn, which uh, basically shoots out those sound waves so we can hear it. It's pretty phenomenal uh, that it doesn't take any electricity, but it doesn't. It's very cool. So this is a groove right here. That's the groove. This is the, the microscopic view. And this is the needle that's sitting in those grooves. So if you have a stereo uh, amplifier, basically the right side is the right channel and the left side of the groove is the left channel. And each groove has a different uh, etching in each side. And so basically when the needle runs across it, it's able to translate that into your right and left channel. So most of you probably don't have uh, a hand crank phonograph. Uh, what you have most likely is something more along the lines of this. This is a more updated version. Uh, this is a uh, magnetic cartridge. So this is your cartridge, this is your needle, and this is your cantilever. So basically when this needle runs across those grooves, it is moving this cantilever up and down. This is basically your right channel and your left channel. And as it moves this, this it has a magnet in there. And as it moves this, it basically sends an electronic signal to your right channel and your left channel. And that translates those sound, those vibrations into sound waves. That, that moves up your tone arm, goes into your preamp, and comes out your speakers. So basically, I usually try to explain a sound system like this. You got your speakers, you got your turn your turntable and you've got your amplifier it's the same way if you were to have a, a sound system like a pa at a concert you got your speakers you've got your soundboard and you've got your microphone your microphone is the needle the soundboard is the amplifier 
and the speakers are the speakers. So basically, the vibrations are coming through that amp, that that needle or the microphone. It's going into the amplifier, which is the soundboard, and coming out of the speakers. It's a very simple concept, but sometimes it takes a little bit of an explanation to be able to figure it out. I hope that is a good explanation for you guys and you're able to confidently say, hey, I know how records work and can explain it to other people because we all need to know these things. It's cool. We have these awesome records and we need to know how they work. So hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, if you can, please hit the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos and follow us on Instagram. We will see you guys next time.